grab those two, Hit create seam, and then I'm going to repeat the process for this bottom area. So make a multi-segment, create a seam, examine it to make sure again it's crossed over, so reverse the seam out. Grab those two, create a seam, and then start working my way down. Make a multi-segment, do the same thing here. Make another multi-segment, grab both of them, create a seam, and then all I have left is the armholes. So I'll create those seams out. And finally, I have this crazy collar that we've been working on earlier. And what's interesting is I'll create that seam so I get a spring line. Must have grabbed something else. Grab that one and that one. Create the seam. I grab something beyond Oops, that's what I did wrong. Again, you have to think these things through. I'm going to delete that out. That's not the spring line that I wanted. And I have a feeling at this point I'm going to get a topology error when I try and connect it over here. When I try and create seam, nope, nope, it worked. But I do need to reverse it so that, again, this edge connects to that spring line. And finally, if my mouse will cooperate, it's getting to that point. I'm going to hit Create Seam. Okay. Now I've got this seam line. I'm going to turn it off. And when I deselect, you'll notice it turns yellow. I don't have to have seams on all the time. And that's actually kind of handy, especially in this case, where these panels need to actually move around Otherwise, because these are going to form the back end of the collar, well, if I just start stitching them together, they're going to pull right here in front of the face, and that's not what we want. So we're going to do a little bit of, of extra work here. Or we've done a little bit of extra work, we've done a lot of extra work, as a matter of fact. So let's actually uh, save this out. And call that placed final two, considering I redid it. Alright, so again, what have we done in the past with the pants and what are we going to do moving forward? So, instead of hitting cloth effects here directly, which we don't want to do, we're going to select an object that's already in the simulation. We're going to go to its object properties. We're going to add the object, that top coat reference. We're going to tell it to be cloth. We're going to tell, make sure the tank top is still a collision object. We're going to turn the pants from a cloth object into a collision object, which I've done. And I'm going to hit OK. And again, first thing out of the gate, it's going to put those edge lines in there. Now, here's where you got to be careful. If I were to go down and hit Reset State, I'd screw up my pants. Because I'm selecting, I have my generic man selected. What I want to do is make sure I've got the top coat selected. Turn on Use Sewing Springs. Some interesting display issues here right now. I'll hit Reset State so I get the springs back the way I want them. And at this point, it's now a matter of simulation time to, to pull this garment together. So what I want to be aware of is these two edges. Because I want them to pass through the head and then turn things on. Because I can do that from within seam sub-object mode inside of cloth effects. So I'm going to turn that off. I've got it selected but it's still not on. And I'm going to hit simulate local damped. And let the garment start to come together.
and I'm already seeing an issue so let's hit stop for right now because as you can see right here my thumbs have interpenetrated this the edges of the jacket and I certainly don't want that to happen at any point any time so what I'm gonna do is hit reset state and in fact I'm gonna go back down to garment maker on it and I'm going to select eh. I'm going to go into panel subobject mode just turn off show end result so I can actually see the panel that I've selected I'm going to move those out of the thumbs so that they're no longer in the way. Go back up to its top. I'm going to hit preserve and then mesh it and preserve so that I don't get the, the panels jumping around when I move back up the stack because that's what they would do. They're still reading or ClothFX was still reading old data at that point. So at this point let's go ahead and simulate local damped. Let me check one other thing here, because I may actually have spheres turned on as collision objects. These two spheres are going to be responsible for preventing the hands from interpenetrating and things like that. And right now, I don't want them on, so I'm going to just turn them inactive and continue to hit simulate, and the sleeve should actually now come freely. Now it's starting to think through this. And once I get to a certain point here, I'll hit stop for the second. You know, these panels are pretty much, I think, far enough along. Or, eh, maybe, maybe they need to go a little bit further. Let's hit simulate local damped again. Let it pull through even further. Okay, that looks pretty good now because I'm now seeing sewing springs all the way through. So I'm going to go into seam subobject mode, select that, and I'm just going to turn it on and hit uh, simulate local damped again. And now these two edges should start to pull together.